Here in the United States and in many other places around the world, there are two dominant political parties. And it's not so good. The question is, if everyone hates two-party systems, why are they so common? Well, one big reason is the voting system most of us use. So in this video, we're gonna simulate some elections to see why plurality is so bad, and we'll also look at two better voting systems. Okay, so here are the three voting systems we're gonna look at. First, there's plurality voting, where every voter votes for exactly one candidate. This is also called first past the post. I'm honestly not quite sure why it's called that, but apparently it's a reference to horse racing. Second, we have instant runoff voting, sometimes called ranked choice voting, where each voter ranks the candidates from best to worst, and then those rankings are used to eliminate one candidate at a time. And finally, there's approval voting, where each voter can vote for as many candidates as they want. Each of these systems will have a flaw and a voting strategy related to that flaw, and we'll fill those in as we go. These are all voting systems that choose one winner. There are also systems that select multiple winners, and those, frankly, are way better. Really just because they don't try to collapse a bunch of different preferences into one single outcome. We might talk about multi-winner systems in a future video, but for now we're going to focus on these single-winner methods, since multi-winner elections aren't always an option without restructuring the government. Which, I guess is hard. But okay, before we dive into the specifics of these methods, let's talk about how we're going to model the voters' preferences. One way to do it, which is pretty common, is to put everything on a one-dimensional left-to-right spectrum. In this model, each candidate and each voter would sit at some position on this line that represents their views. Now, obviously this is much, much simpler than the real world, since all possible issues are just collapsed into one line. We can do a little bit better by using a two-dimensional issue space. This is still a lot simpler than real life, but it at least allows a voter to agree with a candidate on one issue, but disagree on another. And it gives political parties more ways to vary from each other. And just for fun, we can be specific about what these two issues are in this nation of blobs. One issue is whether the government should focus on promoting the production of apples or mangoes, and the other is whether blob homes should be these cute, modern-looking homes, or these wacky, spooky, curvy ones. A candidate positioned right here would be pretty strongly in favor of mangoes and modern-looking homes, and a candidate down here would be somewhat in favor of spooky, curvy homes, and slightly in favor of apples. Each time we set up an election scenario, we'll place a few colorful candidate blobs, and we'll also place 100 gray blobs throughout this issue space as voters. Okay, so now we can look at the plurality system. This is the one where each voter votes for exactly one candidate, and the candidate with the most votes, or the plurality, wins. All right, let's run our first election. In this case, orange beats green. Great. This system works just fine when there are only two candidates or parties, and sure, there will be some disagreement, but it's hard to think of anything that could be more fair than just seeing who most voters prefer. But now let's add a third purple candidate. What do you think will happen in this case? Well, let's see. With purple in the mix, green ends up winning instead of orange. If you live in a place with a two-party system, you probably saw that coming. This result is a bit weird. Purple joined the race just to get last place, but they still changed the winner. Orange voters are going to be mad about that, and even most purple voters would have preferred orange over green. This is called the spoiler effect. So these purple voters are presented with a difficult choice. Do they vote for their honest favorite, leaving the choice to others? Or do they strategically vote for their second choice, hoping to get an outcome they prefer? The argument for voting honestly is that you need to do this if your favorite party is going to have a chance at building more support over time to eventually win. But that'll mean throwing a lot of elections to your least favorite party over time. It's really hard to ignore the tangible, immediate stakes in any given election, so it turns out that most people don't even consider third parties. And the two major parties mostly just need to worry about each other in a zero-sum game. Just look how complacent they are. Anywho, now let's see how these other ones behave. Next we have instant runoff voting, where each voter ranks the candidates from most to least favorite. A runoff system is a series of elections, each one narrowing the list of candidates until a winner is found. 
And with instant runoff voting, we use the voters' rankings to do the runoff instantly. So that's where the name comes from. As an example, let's step through the process using the same set of voters and candidates we used before. Step one is to see how many times each candidate was ranked as the first choice. Notice how these are the same totals as in the honest plurality election. And if this were a plurality election, we'd be done. But in instant runoff, we eliminate the candidate in last place and then run the election again, this time counting the second choices of the purple voters. And this process can be repeated as many times as needed, depending how many candidates there are. And now, these are the same final totals we saw in the plurality elections when the voters were strategic. So one way to think about it is that instant runoff voting allows voters to vote honestly, but if their favorite candidate ends up getting last anyway, they can fall back on being strategic with their second favorite. Pretty nice, honestly. Now you might be thinking, we fixed the spoiler effect. There's no longer a conflict between honesty and strategy. Instant runoff forever. And in some cases, that's true. But there are still some situations where something weird happens, once again forcing some voters to make that difficult choice between honesty and strategy. Before we go through an example of that together, try pausing the video to see if you can find a situation yourself. Okay, so if we arrange the candidates like this, we're gonna get a weird result. So let's see how that works. First, let's run without purple just to see the baseline results. Okay, orange beats green just like before. But now let's add purple back in and see what happens. Purple ends up doing well enough to pass the first round, but by doing so, it knocks orange out of the race, and in the end, green wins. If the purple voters had instead put orange first, orange would have made it through the first round and then beaten green in the final round. And the purple voters like orange better. It boils down to the same situation as the spoiler effect from before. Instant runoff elections are in danger of running into this kind of situation when the three parties are roughly on a line with one party between two other reasonably popular parties. So it's called the center squeeze phenomenon. And here, orange is in danger of being squeezed out. And with how much we like to discuss political issues on that one-dimensional left-to-right spectrum, this situation honestly doesn't seem too unlikely to me. Now, you might be wondering how this would work in real life. Great empirical thinking. Well, we unfortunately don't have too many examples, but Australia has been using instant runoff for over a century now. On the question of party choice, it does seem to be a bit better than the United States, with several parties that manage to have some national representation. But they do still have two dominant parties, as you might expect from this center squeeze phenomenon. So we shouldn't see instant runoff voting as a silver bullet for our democracy, but all this said, it is way better than plurality voting, where you're almost always incentivized to ignore everyone but the two most popular parties. All right, the final system we're gonna talk about is approval voting. Compared to instant runoff voting, approval is pretty simple. Instead of just voting for one candidate, you can vote for as many as you like. For this method, we need to define an approval range. It'll be this big. If a candidate is within this distance of a voter, the voter will approve of that candidate. Otherwise, it won't approve. And it'll be easier to visualize if we draw the circles around the candidates, so let's do that. Now all the voters within these candidate circles will vote for that candidate. Okay, with that in place, once again, we'll try it first with just orange and green. Okay, again, it turns out that orange wins a head-to-head -head with green, and now let's add purple and see how it goes. Hey look, orange still wins. No spoiler effect this time. And not only that, but vote totals for orange and green didn't change at all. Voters could approve or disapprove of purple without needing to change whether they approve of orange or green. And this would be the case no matter how the candidates were arranged. With approval voting, it turns out that as long as everyone is voting honestly, a new candidate can only change the outcome of the election by winning it, which is a pretty nice feature. But you may have noticed that I said, as long as everyone is voting honestly. Even though approval voting doesn't have the same kind of spoiler effect as plurality voting had and instant runoff sometimes had, there are still some reasons for voters to be strategic about their votes. Again, before we go through it together, pause and try to figure out what you might do if you were in the position of some of these voters. Okay, there are actually a few layers of strategy. First, approving all three candidates has the same effect as not voting at all. 
So voters that honestly approve of all three should strategically disapprove of their least favorite candidate, making it more likely that one of their two favorites can win. When we redo the election with the voters following this rule, these are the voters who approve of all three, so they'll strategically cut out their least favorite. And purple actually comes out ahead now. This isn't the best, since fewer voters genuinely approve of the outcome, but it's also not the worst, since purple and orange are so near each other, and everyone still got to be honest about their first choice. But still, not the best. And now there's a second layer of strategy that involves noticing that purple and orange have very similar totals, and both are significantly ahead of green. Out of the voters that approve of both orange and purple, every voter has a favorite of the two. If two of those voters who like orange more decide to strategically betray purple, they can make orange win. But then, if two other voters who like purple best strategically betray orange, then purple wins again. So now purple and orange both have lower totals, but green's total is the same. But the orange voters still want to win, so they betray some more. And then team purple betrays some more. And so on. And green keeps getting closer and closer to winning. Of course, the purple and orange voters wouldn't purposely hand the election to green, but since the election happens all at once, they have to decide ahead of time how much to betray each other. Each side can win by out-betraying the other side. But if they both go too far, green will win, and they'll both be sad. I mean, green will be happy, but purple and orange will be sad. This is called the chicken dilemma, because they're kind of seeing which one chickens out. And it has a similar structure to the hawk dove game from Game Theory, which I have another video about if you want to check it out. So if we take this chicken dilemma to its extreme conclusion, everyone just votes for their favorite and nobody else, which is basically just the plurality system. But I think it's still worth noting that even in the case with rampant strategic voting, no voter ever had a reason not to approve of its actual favorite. All the strategizing was around the second or third favorites, so that's still a nice feature. Before we go back to look at all of the systems together, there are a few more things to say about approval voting. First, approval voting is a special case of a category of voting systems called score voting or range voting systems. Approval voting basically lets you score each candidate on a range of 0 or 1, but some systems let you assign a score from a different range, like from 1 to 10 or from A to F if you like letter grades. And finally, we should also talk about real-world examples. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any examples that were long-lasting and well-documented, at least for governments, so I'm not sure we can really say anything too definitive about approval voting without giving it a little bit more of a try. Okay, so now that we've looked at all three, what can we say? Well, none of the systems are perfect, but we can say that it's pretty clear that plurality voting is the worst. It's just bad. But as far as the other two go, it's hard to say which is better without more real world examples. One nice thing about instant runoff is that it's the second most common single winner voting method, so it might have the best chance of actually replacing plurality. On the other hand, I do tend to like approval because voters can always be honest about their first choice. Whether you're very aggressive and greedy with your vote, or you're very willing to compromise and vote for your second favorite, you can always, always, always vote for your first choice. Which I find really convincing, if you can't tell. <laughs> but in the end, I'd happily take either one of these over plurality voting. Because again, plurality voting is bad. But having said that, even though that system sucks, it's still much better than nothing. So vote every time you get the chance. As always, thanks for watching. And again, vote every time you get the chance.